Hi, brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope you're doing all well and blessed. Um, I wanted to get on here just quickly and share a vision that I had a couple days ago. I've been led to share this vision by the Lord and I was given confirmation today. So um, it was a very brief vision, very simple vision, but I think it has um, profound um, meaning. So I was relaxing on the couch. This was on September 8th, just two days ago, with my eyes closed. And um, I saw an image of a candlestick in one of those little old-timey um, candle holders. You know, the, the style with the little, um, you know, handle where you could carry the candle in the dark um, before electricity. And it was like a medium-sized candle and it had wax um, like dripping down, like it had been burning for a little while. And it was lit. And um, all of a sudden when I perceived it, it was blown out. The candle was blown out, um, snuffed out. And there was like smoke that came off the wick, um, just like if you were to blow out a candle. And that was the end of the vision. And... Um, immediately knew that even though this was a very simple vision that there was um, a bigger meaning behind it. The Lord has been confirming to me um, that the things that he's giving me are um, prophetic and I'll share more about that in another video hopefully soon. But he gave me a huge confirmation that the things that I'm seeing um, are prophetic and are going to come to pass soon. Um, so when I went to scripture and I looked up candle, um, I found quite a few, um, scriptures, um, about candles in, in the Bible, and I'll just share a few of them. Um, so in Job, um, Job 18, 5 through 6, it says, Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. And then it goes on in Job 21, 17. Um, how oft is the candle of the wicked put out, and how oft cometh their destruction upon them? God distributeth sorrows in his anger. Um, so um, I kept reading, and in Proverbs uh, 24, 20, it reads, um, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Um, and then in Jeremiah um, 25, 10 through 11, it reads, moreover, I will take, them the, uh, take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And um, similarly, in Revelation 18, 23, um, it's a very similar verse to the Jeremiah prophecy I just read. Um, it says, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries, which is pharmakia in the Greek, uh, were all nations deceived. And um, so all of these uh, references were talking about um, judgment. Candles being snuffed out is the judgment of God upon the wicked. And when I kept reading, um, as confirmation um, in Job, um, it had a, a verse talking about um, the light of the candle um, being given to walk through darkness to the righteous. Um, it says, Job 29, 2 through 3, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle... Um, shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness um so it paints a really beautiful picture of like you literally have a light on your forehead and we know Christ said that um 
his followers are the light of the earth and to not um, put your light under a basket, to put it up on a stand. Um, and in Psalms 18, um, 28, um, it reads, For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. And in Proverbs 20, 27, it reads, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Um, so it's your spirit. Uh, there's no hiding your spirit from the Lord. He will use your spirit to look at the inward parts of you and know what your intentions are, if you have a good heart or not. And then we'll also be um, reflections of his light, of that candle through our spirit. So um, if we have the candle on our forehead, like in Job, we'll be able to walk through the darkness. So I believe that this is um, prophetic, that it means um, what we've, what so many of us have been um, feeling, um, that judgment is soon coming to the world and to America is going to come to pass. But um, don't be afraid. If you have the light of God on your forehead, you'll be able to walk through the darkness. And um, if you search darkness in um, the Bible, darkness, it sounds strange, but look it up for yourselves. Darkness accompanies almost every single time the Lord makes manifest his presence, um, whether it be on Mount Sinai or um, anytime he comes and, and any of the prophecies that talk about the Lord coming down the great day of the Lord, um, they talk about him coming in a cloud of darkness. Um, so, um, so this is the time, you guys, where we need to be strengthening ourselves, strengthening our light, putting oil in our lamps, being the wise virgin, virgins, abiding in the Lord, um, abiding in the vine. And I know that there are so many distractions in this world, whether it be your family or your job or other circumstances you may find yourself in that um, tend to pull you away from him. But it's so important to carve out that time and do it in the beginning of the day if you can. Um, that's what I've been trying to do in the mornings is get up before anyone else in my household does. Before I have to be a mom or a wife, I go to God first and I give him my first fruits of the day and I just spend a little time with him, whether that's, you know, reading scripture or praying or worshiping or, you know, there's some mornings where I literally, I'm so tired, but I pull myself out of bed and I just throw myself um, on the couch with the Lord and just meditate on him. And just make sure that you are, um, spending that time that you're making appointments with the Lord that you're you're giving him um, some of your time and that you're abiding in him because that's how we get the oil the oil is intimacy with the Lord so it's very important um, that we carve out that time and we give God our tithe of time so we, you know, I don't know if you guys are, you know, watching things unfold as quickly as I am, but I just feel like whenever I look at news, which is not often, I'll just kind of like try and keep my finger on the pulse of what's happening in the world without getting caught up in it. But it's like every time I look, I'm like, oh, there's another prophecy that's being fulfilled. <laughs> so I know the time is short. Um, he's coming, he's coming soon. And, um, you know, we're, we may, I don't know how much we'll have to see, how much we'll have to endure, 
but if you remember in Revelation um, with the seven the letters to the seven churches, he says to those who overcome, he gives these rewards, right? For each church, he gives a reward to those overcomers. So we're going to have to overcome. We're going to have to overcome the world, all the temptation, all the sin, um, and possibly even you know, persecution. I don't know what we're going to see. Um, war, famine, we're going to have to overcome. But if you are set apart from the world, it's just like you know, the Israelites who were in Egypt, when God sent the 10 plagues to Egypt, they were separate from those plagues. So they witnessed them. They saw it all happening, just like God said that it would happen. Um, so they were witnesses to the 10 plagues, but they were held um, in safety in Goshen. And he even talks about the plague of darkness when the thick darkness came upon Egypt, there was a separation of darkness um, between the Egyptians and the Israelites who were dwelling in Goshen, the land of, of peace and, and safety. So um, just remember that, guys. We may be witnesses to some of these judgments, but if you're set apart and you're abiding in the vine, um, the Lord will will not allow you to endure them, okay? So even though we'll be able to see all these things happening, um, just stay close to him. Um, keep your lamps um, topped off and um, pray. Pray always and repent, guys. Repent with all your hearts, okay? The kingdom of God is at hand. The Lord is coming soon. And he's coming for a bride who is spotless, without wrinkle. And we need to be in a place of um, repentance and posturing ourselves um, toward God in a way that we know is good and pleasing to him. So anyways, guys, that's it. That's the message. And um, I'll be on here again soon to share more about some of the amazing confirmations that the Lord's been giving me recently. So um, God bless you all.